we got a third Green Lantern cast in James Gunn's new DCU. First, you got Nathan Fillion in Superman Legacy playing Guy Gardner. Then, in the show Lanterns, now we have Kyle Chandler from shows like Friday Night Lights and movies like those Godzilla movies. He will be playing a, an older version of Hal Jordan, older than usual, because usually he's, you know, I don't know, how old are all those guys supposed to be, right? They're all, like, somewhere in their 30s, usually. I would say the Justice League and, like, Hal specifically, because uh, he's not the oldest member of the Justice League, but he's also not the youngest, and uh, they're going to be sticking with that here, I guess. But there were a couple of options for John Stewart, the third Green Lantern, and no, not the Carolina Panthers running back or the Daily Show host, but the comic book character, John Stewart, intergalactic space cop. Uh, I guess intergalactic space is kind of redundant. Although technically, he's confined somewhat to a sector, so is it, maybe he, he might just be a space cop. I don't know how the galaxies work. The story behind this, at one point, Tom King, one of the writers of Lanterns, a comic book writer who I follow and I think is great, uh, he started following two people on Instagram. The first one was Damson Idris, an actor I'm not super familiar with, who is mostly known for a show called Snowfall. He's going to be in that Formula One movie next year. He seems cool. He seems to not have made it very far in contention here because apparently it came down to two actors, one of whom was also in this conversation. It was an actor named Aaron Pierre, who people know probably from one of two things. One, he played mid-sized sedan in the very weird... M. Night Shyamalan movie, Old. In Midsize Sedan, he was not a car, he was a rapper who was named Midsize Sedan because M. Night Shyamalan movies are frequently, like, almost there. They almost come up with names of rappers in their songs where you're like, that sounds like a real thing that someone could make. As opposed to that, seems like something written for a movie. But yeah, in universe, he's a rapper who has a song called Mordo for the Cookin', and yeah, he's on the beach that makes you old. It's not good. Don't watch it. We'll watch it. It's kind of fun. But then he's most known now for being in a movie called Rebel Ridge, which was a Netflix original movie and has become a humongous hit. He plays a just normal man who gets hassled by the police. They turn his life upside down and he ends up having to take control and, you know, do what he has to do. I don't want to get into it too much because I, I think Rebel Ridge is very good. I think the movie is a lot of fun and I think it's pretty good in it. I think everybody in it is doing a good job, but... Uh, there's a lot of people who have recommended this too, and most of them after they've seen it have been like, that was cool. So if you haven't watched it, watch it. It's by the director that made Green Room, but I wouldn't say it's as like gory as Green Room or anything like that. I think it's more palatable to just your average moviegoer. It's also going to be Mufasa and that Mufasa movie that I just watched an interview with Nathan Lane, and he said it, the, he thought it was funny that they're making it. They just haven't made enough money. He would know. He's Timon. But apparently Aaron Pierre did actually make it to the final round of casting. The other actor who made it to this final round of casting one was not in the original Instagram follow. Maybe he doesn't have Instagram or whatever. Probably does. Who doesn't have Instagram? I have an Instagram. I don't use it, but I have it. So the other actor is someone named Stephen James, who I would bet the role that most people have seen them in, they played... Uh, John Lewis in the movie Selma, so it's a smaller role, but that was a pretty big hit, like an Oscar darling. They were on a show recently called Beacon 21, which was an MGM plus production or something about a space guy, and he maybe wasn't everything that he seemed. I watched one episode of it just because I was curious. Apparently both of those actors, Aaron Pierre and Stephen James, they both read with Kyle Chandler on like Thursday and Friday of last week. While according to this article, they both had their boosters. So there were some people that were on one side or the other. But the role eventually went to Aaron Pierre. And he's officially going to be Jon Stewart, the third Green Lantern in James Gunn's new DC Universe. And the star, probably one of the two stars of the show, Lanterns. It's not clear if it's more... I, it, it feels like, if I had to guess, he's going to be the POV character. He's going to you know, be brought on because it does feel like he's a new recruit where Hal Jordan is this veteran who's maybe a little jaded probably because it's a Tom King, you know, production. So those, that's how those tend to go. And it's a Damon Lindelof production. So that's how those tend to go too. Uh, maybe he's got even got some secrets and we're going to probably spend more time with Jon Stewart. That's, that's just my guess, but it'll mostly be a buddy cop thing. So like my opinion, and I didn't have an opinion on Damn Sin Idris. I have not seen Snowfall uh, and he's, but he was not in the running. It seems like as much as these other two guys. Between the two of them, because I went and I watched some Stephen James stuff. Specifically, I watched his Beacon 21 show, which was something they were in recently. Uh, and I yeah, rewatched Selma and stuff. So I think from having at least a very shallow introduction to both of them and seeing them do their thing, like both in starring roles, I have to say, just based on their performances, I do think Aaron Pierre has more of what I would call John Stewart energy. And a lot of people's opinions on John Stewart, much like my own, 
are going to be informed by the Justice League Unlimited and the, I guess just the Justice League show that he was on where he was the main Green Lantern on that version of the Justice League. And he was like one of the core seven members of that team when everything expanded. He was, especially when you would contrast him against The Flash, who was a character he spent a lot of time with, a very no-nonsense, very serious guy. Like, he didn't play around. He was very capable. And he wasn't like he had, like, so much of a hard shell that he couldn't break through because obviously he had a big romance going on with Hawkgirl and then eventually Vixen on the show. But he did feel like he was a character coming from the Marines. Then we'll say, to be fair, in previous videos, I've said that he is a Marine and an architect. Sometimes I've called him a military architect or whatever. The story with him, with John Stewart specifically, is he used to be an architect and then... I'm not sure if this was for the Justice League show or if this just happened around the same time. They, like, changed his origin, made him a Marine. Same-ish characterization, like, it didn't change the character that drastically, but that was not always his deal. In the modern version of this, I believe he was in the military and then became an architect. That is, like, the Jon Stewart backstory. I kind of think they'll probably just stick with the Marine thing or maybe even flip it, but either way. I guess the other thing with him, too, he does get angry, and that is kind of fun about him, whereas characters like Batman, Superman are very stoic. Jon Stewart has a temper, not in the way that a character like Wolverine has one necessarily. Like he's not on a hair trigger or anything like that, but he does get angry. And I think that's cool. I think that's a good quality, especially for a character in a show like this to have. And nothing against Stephen James, by the way. In the things that I've seen him in, I think he's fine. I just don't get that same energy. I do think Aaron Pierre... Rebel Ridge just happened at the perfect time, and that is a Jon Stewart audition tape, or could be, depending on what they're doing with Jon Stewart, but, like, that is one-to-one. I think you could take anybody who has seen the Justice League cartoon and go, hey, did you see that Rebel Ridge movie? Yeah, that guy's gonna play Green Lantern. Then go, oh, yeah, I see it. But, like, Stephen James, for me, I don't think he has the vibe. I haven't seen that from him yet. Whereas, with Aaron Pierre, totally seen it. Now, I do want to say... There's been a lot of controversy, a lot of people talking online, discourse, as you would say, although I think that has like a negative connotation now where I think this discourse is interesting and like important about whether Aaron Pierre is the right pick for this role, specifically because he is a light skinned black man, as opposed to either of those other two actors I named, but definitely Stephen James, who was like in the running in the final two, uh, who is a dark skinned black man. Jon Stewart is traditionally drawn as a dark-skinned black man. This was not something I was super familiar with. Honestly, I'm not a humongous Green Lanterns fan, but apparently people like on Earth different interviews and stuff. That was a key design feature of Jon Stewart. And here's the quote I've seen floating around. I believe this is probably true. It's, it's like, you know what it is? It's a quote that's like so specific, and like the version that I'm looking at right now is in such a bad quality that it's like, this gotta be real. Uh, but apparently the person who created Jon Stewart has always envisioned him to be dark-skinned. So I'm just going to read this. Is, this is the whole quote here. Second ending of the story happened very close to doing the book. So I did the book and I handed it in and I colored it. Back in those days, when you colored comic books, you had to mark your colors. You would number them. So Anglo-Saxon flesh would be Y2R2. That's 25% yellow, 25% red. Black people, they usually did like a khaki, a light brown. It was yr 2 B2. And they colored all black people that way. So I didn't, of course. I colored Jon Stewart dark brown. I handed the job in and marked it YR3B2. That's going to be dark. Sol comes in and says, Neil, I noticed you colored the Jon Stewart guy kind of a darker brown. Yeah. Well, we usually color black people a little brown. Yeah, I noticed that. In fact, over at Marvel, they color this character Gabe in the Howling Commandos gray. Y2R2B2 gray. Yeah, but... Are you sure you want to have him that dark? Well, yeah. Most black people I know are pretty dark. There's some very light-skinned people, but not Jon Stewart. Now I'm going to say something that they say that's going to be a direct quote. You have to understand it is a direct quote, and you'll hear it, and you'll go, Really? Nobody would have said that. Nobody human would have said that. But you still have to remember the times we were in, okay? He said, Are you sure black people won't be offended? And then then they laugh. That's the end of the quote. So colorism, or the idea that Certain actors with darker skin tend to get passed over for roles in post people with lighter skin. And these are all actors that are black. But like the classic example, Halle Berry Storm, right? That's like a character in the comics who is traditionally very dark skinned, played by one of the lighter skinned actors. And then Alexandra Shipstorm as well, although they're technically kind of supposed to be the same character. So I understand why you technically want to kind of cast somebody who looks like her it's the, those the continuity of those movies is a disaster but still that's i would assume if you ask someone at marvel 
or Fox or whatever, that's the answer they would give you. Then you compare that to like Black Panther, for example, and you have guys like Chad Bozeman or Daniel Kaluuya, right? Like very dark skinned actors playing characters from Wakanda. Now, I'm sure people will say, well, not everybody in Wakanda or in Africa looks exactly like that. It's true. And that is why this is a very complicated subject to discuss. And no group is a monolith. So there are plenty of people that are also black who will say this is a problem and plenty of people who will say it is not. Uh, they don't care. I'm sympathetic towards the people that say it should be darker skinned because we have the guy who made the character saying they wanted him to be darker skinned. I think that's pretty cut and dry. On the other side, I do just, I have trouble here with Aaron Pierre specifically because I just think he's so good. I think if Rebel Ridge didn't exist, I think you could see mid sized sedan or something and go, yeah, I don't know. He's probably not the perfect pick for this role. But there are a lot of people online who are just like, no, he's just really good for Jon Stewart. He may not have the exact same skin tone as the character, but like when you put him up against the other actors that were in contention here, he's the best one. And overall, they're just a very good actor. So I, I guess what I'm saying is so, so the whole to wrap this whole thing up, because I'm not going to solve this. I think overall, James Gunn's casting in the DCU, besides the one pick that I just don't love, and we'll see, it could still be good, has been pretty good. I think he's done a good job of representing what it seems like are very basic versions of these characters on screen. I don't mean basic like, you know, bad, but I just mean basic in terms of like, Skylar Gisando is like the platonic example of Jimmy Olsen. Like he's got it exactly right. As opposed to like doing something a little differently in terms of like, gender or also just like getting someone that's older or younger or something like that but like i feel like they they really do seem like they take the characters on the page read the comics go all right who's this guy who in hollywood is this same with like what's her name the lois right rachel brosnahan also that if this was like a you know spider-man situation like with my boy venom here i would be a little bit more like we shouldn't trust these people that they think they found the best guy because they have clearly not done that in other situations like They've not been great at casting these movies in general. But with with James Gunn's movies, it does seem like his casting is pretty solid. I have sympathy towards the people that want to see Jon Stewart represented accurately in terms of skin color. And I have sympathy towards people that want to see Jon Stewart represented accurately as they see it in terms of his character in a way that Aaron Pierre just does better. So I guess what's important about this uh, is A, that it exists. This is something that people are talking about. But not just like talking about like because we're talking about it, we're actually solving the problem. But I mean, like it does seem like this is something that James Gunn and his team are aware of and they're like figuring it out. Uh, And also, I guess when we start seeing, you know, more and more people cast in more and more roles because they're going to have to start filling out members of the authority and Swamp Thing and all kinds of stuff. Like we'll see trends with the new DCU the same way that you could say we saw trends with the, you know, MCU. Like we'll see, is this a problem that James Gunn's new DCU has or is this going to end up being an outlier? Because like I do think looking at Halle Berry X-Men, right? That was 20 plus years ago or whatever. And then comparing that to the MCU, which has characters that are Wakandan, but also just like characters that are black, you know, War Machine, whatever. I don't think this is a huge problem in the MCU. I haven't seen a lot of discourse about it and relating to specific characters, but like when the MCU casts its storm, I have a like trust them that they're gonna not mess that up, you know? It's like, I guess we can hope that Hollywood is better at this in terms of understanding like the problem and going. Listen, I know that this is important, but this guy is perfect, and that's why we picked him. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and I think it's fine to call him out on it. They're like, don't like yell at Aaron Pierre and stuff. But like, there's definitely people that are saying like, I am upset about this on Twitter and posting like that little quote that I read by the person that designed John Stewart. Like, we definitely can't ignore that. I'm like a little bit surprised. I'm, I guess I'm not surprised James Gunn specifically hasn't waded into this. He's just so online. That's the thing with him. There's no way that I don't think he's seen this discussion and and thought about this the same way that other directors, not to call any specific ones out, but like some of directors, like Christopher Nolan, I'm like, does he even have a Twitter account? Does he even know what Twitter looks like? I think James Gunn is one of the highest profile directors who also is very active on social media and must get this stuff. Like this has got to be, you know, coming to them. Personally, as far as acting goes, I think Aaron Pierre is a perfect Jon Stewart. Like watching Rebel Ridge, seeing him, you could be like, yeah, that could be a flashback in Jon Stewart's life. That could be something that just happened to him. 
Maybe there's like one or two specifics that wouldn't line up right. But like overall, it's very good. But colorism is a problem. And this is an interesting case. I think part of why this is interesting too is just like I didn't know that thing about Jon Stewart. Because I'm not the biggest Jon Stewart fan. But like for instance like with Storm, I would know that. You, you know what so but and also the other thing people bring up all kinds of images of comics where they'll say like no see he has lighter skin this one and it's like yeah they're not consistent with that kind of stuff and and with skin color in general they will draw characters and forget to do the skin color for them in a way that's really weird uh but like a mistake but you know it's because comics is art you know and there's lighting and things like that to consider so sometimes characters do look different so like i don't think this is an argument that could be one on twitter or whatever but especially just taking a picture and going see he looks like that yeah, he kind of does in that picture, but maybe not in all of them. And I don't think you can get better than an actual statement by the person who created the character saying, this is what I wanted him to look like in relation to other black characters. I wanted him to be darker. So yeah, two characters here. And we're going to get Green Lantern show. I think like a lot of the discourse has not like necessarily overshadowed the fact, but like you got to take a second, at least for me, to just look back and go, wow. We're going to get a, there has not been a live action Jon Stewart, unless you count that one thing that they filmed in Zack Snyder's backyard that doesn't count. But for actual movies and TV shows, there's not been a live action Jon Stewart yet. And also not counting Diggle because of what whatever the hell they were doing on Arrow. So it's just cool that we're getting a Green Lantern show, like especially someone, speaking of Sony, and I want to beat up on Sony as much as I possibly can. DC used to do this too, though, which is announce a bazillion movies and none of them would get made. And you go, all right, we'll see about that Lanterns movie. Especially because they did that with another Lanterns project already. Like, they had announced one that just never happened. It's cool to see this one being cast and, like, they're really going to make it. Because, man, the team behind it I love. And these actors are good. And according to Nexus Point News, uh, Kelly McDonald, who people mm, probably mostly know from Brave. She's the voice of Brave. I mean, she's in other stuff. Uh, is apparently being eyed for a uh, female role that might be a love interest. So that could be Carol Ferris, maybe Star Sapphire, if they're going to do that. But again, the scale of this seems like we're not going to be flying around in space a lot. So, But yeah, Carol Ferris is a person, so she could just be on Earth too. Uh, there are other people that are apparently like other characters, but they're original, or at least they seem to be original characters, like a love interest that Jon Stewart might have. I don't know. That stuff is like... But who cares? We'll find that stuff out when we find it out. But we might even have a Star Sapphire in this universe. We'll see. Kelly McDonald is cool. She was in, um, what else is she in? Also in Boardwalk Empire, the movie, the Radleys that just came out. Helena Ravenclaw and those Harry Potters. Who cares? Uh, yeah, I would say that's her main, main, main stuff that, that I would expect most people to recognize her from. Also, Aaron Pierre is British. And, uh, I would never have guessed from... Uh, watching Rumble Ridge, so that's always good when you can hide an accent effectively. That's, that's important. Uh, so, you know, this was too long. This video is too long, and I'm sorry about that. But like, it's a yeah complicated topic. But uh, at least now, I think it's something that like studios seem to be getting better at, especially with certain comic book characters. They're not perfect, and Mortimer is going to rip down the. Uh, what are you doing? It's <laughs> gonna rip down the soundproofing. Because he's like, this video is too long. He's right. Uh, you, you, you've heard all the things that I've said. It's all those things. So thank you all for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you next time. Uh, goodbye.